Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to 10,000 and below, except today we're at 13,000 and below. What, what this is, is it's a series where I'm talking about games that are quite low ranked on Board Game Geek. But low ranked doesn't mean they're bad. They might be great, they might be good, they might be bad, they might be weird. Let's take a look. We take a look at 100 at a time, or at least some of 100 at a time. Here we go. So we always take a look at the first one. This is the Game of Life, the card game. Well, that's kind of cool. We'll take a look at that one. We have Debtzilla. I want to take a look at that one briefly. And then Raid and Trade, a game you can see I ranked four. So that ain't too good for that. Game of Life, the card game. Doesn't come with a spinner. Ah, what? Rob Davio? Wait, wait. So I don't like the art for this at all, unfortunately. It looks... Rob Davio being the designer is a, is a neat thing, but I gotta be honest, I'm not really sold on this at all. I like the idea of life, I like the spinner, I like the car, I like the things, they took all that out. But it still might be a decent game, you can see not a ton of people have played it. Debtzilla, this one I just find fascinating, this one here is from Capital Gains Studio. I believe this is on our shelf to be reviewed at some point in time, or I might have sent it to one of the other reviewers. I like the art, but I mean, it is kind of scary that you, I don't know why Thor's hammer was there. You have these different bo enemies you fight, like Inflation Saris. Yeah, I hate that guy. Him and Detzilla are the worst. Raid and Trade, I wanted to like this game. This is from Mage Company, and then I guess Ninja Division picked it up. This is a game in the future where you're moving around, at, like you see, there's a post-apocalyptic thing. You're going around, you have these different missions that you need to accomplish, you need to get different stuff. Luck, luck, luckity, luck, 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 luck. Unfortunately, I, I just can't really recommend it. Alter Quest, crossbows and cannon too. That's not crossbows and catapults. Firefight, modern U.S. and Soviet small unit tactics. And go, Goblin, go! Go, Goblin, go, go, go! Alter Quest, this one will not be here for long. It's going to move up. This is coming from the Saddler Brothers. This is their dungeon crawl. This one is only low, ranked low because it's not out yet. I'm certainly interested in this one. Uh, the Saddler Brothers were had a lot to do with Descent, so we'll see what this does. Crossbow and Cannon, yeah, it is a war game, which is fine, but I had hoped for another Crossbow and Catapult style thing. Firefight, this came out the year I was born. There is a ton of, people don't realize just how many war games exist on the internet. Firefight, modern US and Soviet small unit tactics. Well, if you want to fight, well, I guess it was modern back then, but back then in, you know, in the 70s, this was something that could really happen. It must have been kind of scary playing that game. Go Goblin Go. This is from Twilight Creations. Okay. Twilight Creations is best known for zombies. Here you have little goblins, which I'm sure that you can go buy a bag of goblins from them. And it looks like a racing game. Huh. You think it's like their version of you're picking three racing gamblings and then you, you manipulate their movement? Okay, so it's one of those style games. I wonder why it's ranked so low then. Maybe people bought it expecting something else. Alrighty, zooming down here. Obama Llama. Don't worry, it's not a political game. Uh, and then, uh, let's see, jumping down here, Tilting at Windmills, I like the name of that game, Metro 2033, alright, so first Obama Llama, this is just, uh, it's from Big Potato, it's one of their things, you're just rhyming things together, George Clooney doing a Mooney, Harrison Ford drawing a sword, you have these things and then you have to mime them, so they know that it rhymes, and you're miming it, so they're trying to figure out exactly what it is. It's just, it's more silliness than not. Again, I haven't played it. I've went through the rules and stuff. That's the kind of game Big Potato makes, but I, you know, that's the end of that. Metro 2033, this is from Hobby World. Um, I did not play this one. I think I looked at it. I did look at this one. Wow, I wonder why I never played it. It looked interesting, like there's a subway line with guns. And Monsters, that's a very unique thing. I don't know if I like the artwork, but it looks like it's a, a thinky style game. Um, 
At the same time, these big thinky games should be ranked higher. The fact that this one's ranked low, I think, worries me some. This re implements Metro 2033. But this is called Metro 2033. It's the same game. Just one came out in 2010, one came out in 2011. All right, fine. All right, let's see. Master Thief. Lose the big push. Ooh, the Beast Lord has 101 ratings. Kitty Cataclysm. We're looking at that just based on the name. And Chaos in the Kids Room. That gave this one a 6 out of 10. Oh, and Marvel United. You may have heard of this game. All right, the Beast Lord, 1979. Hidden Movement. Dummy Counters. It's like a war game, but fantasy style. Interesting. I wonder, like, how many people play these these big war games and also like fantasy stuff, right? Like, I, I I bet back in the day when this came out, there was not a lot of options. That's not a great cover. Um, uh, but now, fantasy people probably want a different style game, and people who like these kind of war games probably I found that they often just like the historicalness of games. Kitty cat. Oh, cataclysm, I see. They put the word cat there. Uh, steal, draw, donate, and pass around your cards. You're trying to hold on to value bonds. Oh, I don't like that artwork. Oh, that's bad. That looks like a prototype. I don't got time for that. Chaos in the kid's room. Uh, you must mess up, uh, clean up a messy card room by flipping cards to find a match. You flip a card, and then you got to find the stuff out there in the middle. Okay, simple enough. It, it sounds like a lot of other kid games, so I don't remember it real well, but Marvel United, they just started showing off. the pa There's painted miniatures for this. There's a ton of stuff. This is the game that was just kickstarted on uh, Come On, by Come On, and uh, by Spin Master together. The Spin Master version is coming out later this year, but if you want all these extra bonus stuff, that's a ton of stuff. Uh, then you had to kickstart it. I'm excited about this. I know nothing about the game other than it's Chibi X-Men. And we're just going to have to wait and see. I like how it looks a lot. I'm um, looking forward to playing it when it comes out. And it's not going to be down in the 10,000 and below. As soon as people start ranking it, whoo! All right, this card game has 100 ratings. Siege Stone has 90 ratings. And Bakshish? I don't know how to pronounce that. There's a Stratego Civil War Edition. Huh. All right, let's take a look at this one. Oh, this is a biking game. It's the official game on a racing simulation. I guess there must be a name of a race that is this way. So I'll actually type this in. Uh, that's uh, Giro d'Italia. Yep, it's an annual multiple stage bicycle race held in Italy. Well, there you go. So the name of the game then is based on that. Rio Grande did a version of this. In 2009, I've never seen the game. Huh, I wonder why it didn't do as well. All right, Siege Stones. This is from Live Oak Games, designed by Patrick Matthews. I want to say, did Sam Healy review this? It has a nice look to it, like with those stones and stuff put there. The back of the box is not going to sell it, but... And this one came out in 1995 from Gold Zebra. Gold Zebra has made some pretty good games. What is Gold Zebra? I don't. Are they out of business? I haven't seen them in years. They made some pretty neat stuff back in the day. Looks like an Aladdin's. Looks like almost an early version of like Aladdin's Dragons or something like that. Okay. Here we got Stratego American Civil War. That's. Oh, I like how those pieces look. It's a much smaller version, I think. Yeah, and they just give different numbers. All right, well, if you want to play Civil War, I guess this is more of a collector's thing than anything else. All right, where are we at here? Sliding down here, here's a Lord of the Rings game with 112 ratings. Picture, picture. Uh, block, go. You'll notice that I'm giving several of these games sevens here. Um, and Brink. I also want to take a look at this game called Rookie Heroes. All right, let's see. First of all, we got this Lord of the Rings game. The Middle Earth orcs are coming out. You need to fight against them. This is designed by J.R.R. Herrig, who this is pretty much all he's designed. Another Lord of the Rings game from Cosmos. 
This one is probably just lowly ranked because it never made it to America for whatever reason. Huh. It may not be very Lord of the Rings this year. It looks like almost an abstract game, too. Picture, picture. I played this game as a lot as a kid, and I still love it. You get a picture like this, which shows a gazillion things on it, and everyone writes down something that matches a letter of the alphabet on this piece of paper here. Like, there's a bag, and you're trying to write stuff that no one else writes down. I love this game as a kid. This is a criminal that this game is ranked so low. It's a mass market, but who cares? Block Go. Ooh, I do like, I like how that looks. They look like Legos almost. It's Blockbuster. Oh, it was it was first released under Blockbuster. Oh, wait a minute. Didn't I Didn't I play this? Yes, 11 years ago. Okay. I didn't play the version called Block O. Oh, I don't remember if I liked it or not. It's been so long. I remember I remember the game now, the little pieces you putting them in there, but I don't remember much more about it. I'm sorry. You have to, you have to go watch my review. Brink. Oh, yeah. I reviewed this one. Oh, right. I gave it a seven. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. I like this style game. There's more than one of these now. It's a really neat device. It sits on top of this, and you put these things on, and it's tilting and tilting until it falls over. This works really well. Uh, again, this is kind of a, a mass market style game, but who cares? Winning moves. I enjoyed this one a lot. It's, it looks cool. It's fun to play. I don't know where it is right now. If I get the copy of this again, I'm going to stick it in the Dice Tower Library because I like having stuff like this that you can just pull out and be silly with. Rookie Heroes came out in 2017. It's hard to sell a superhero game that's not based on an IP. Sentinels of the Multiverse pulled it off, but not very often. And then you just end up with heroes that look a little generic here. Yeah, but it might be good. Ouch. Oops. Pow. I do like those dice. Ouch. Oops. Alrighty, Brink. I want to play Brink now that I've seen that. Paradise Lost. I've talked about this one before. I think this one's fallen more since we, I think we've seen this before on the 10,000 and below. Take Your Best Shot. That's a 7.5. Shafusa did not rank very highly. And Stack of Biddy is 7. There's a lot of good games in this one here. Paradise Lost, unfortunately, tries to be everything. Tries to be Clue. Tries to be uh, Tokaido. It has a nice looking board, but the components themselves are fairly generic. I just felt bad. This one's just a big mess of a game. It has no development at all. Take your best shot. It's fun. It's a game in which you are trying to guess the answer. And when you guess the answer, you throw it into this device. And then the ball that falls down first is the one that wins. Uh, let me see if I can find a picture of the game in action. They're all showing the components. Well, there's the game itself. So you are trying to throw in an answer from one to five, and then the, the answer that's correct, that's closer to the bottom wins. It's a silly device, but it works well. I like this game. Shafausa here. Uh, you are digging in the earth, trying to find things. This came out in 2012. Let me look at the picture. A lot of pieces going on in this one. I am struggling to remember it at all, unfortunately. It's like a stock market style game, I think. Nah. Stack of Biddy, on the other hand, I like this one a lot. You are essentially stacking these blocks to make this line go back and forth. So when you take a block, you're trying to figure out the best way to make it match the line and not make the whole thing fall over. And you're trying to put these biddies, these small people with faces on, on your pile somewhere without having the whole thing fall over. It's quite well done. It's a good stacking game. Then we have Showdown Icons. Another seven. City Alarm, I've not played that one. Malarkey, I didn't rank this one very highly. And Chronicler, another seven. In front of me, Pastry Party. Man, lots of games to talk about here. All right, we'll come back. Let's take a look at these. Showdown Icons is a really funky game. It's from Weird Miniatures. They don't make many board games. Uh, and this one, you had a deck of cards with some really funky artwork on them. And you just were, it's one of those player versus player games that I found to be very fun, kind of outthink the other person, and it was much better than I'd anticipated. Oh, City Alarm is a Lego game. Yeah, yeah, Legos. These games were never fantastic, but they were Lego, so they're going to get moved up there. See, I don't know anything about this. I'm assuming it's not that great of a game, and I want to just build it and play it. 
Malarkey. Malarkey is the original game of everyone has, you know, something and everyone makes something up and one person has, and then you have, someone's just making something up and you have to figure out who's lying. The problem is, it's like Boulder Dash, but out loud. And the problem with this is a lot of people can't make up the, the stuff out loud on the spot and make it sound convincing. Writing is a little bit easier. So Malarkey sounds like a good idea. It didn't work for me. Chronicler, I gave this one a 7. It's a civilization game. Let's go back in history from 2015. Let me take a look at this so I can remember what it looks like. Oh, yeah, I remember this is I remember that box. Okay, so you're building these cards in order and as you go through history, it's not it's more it's very Civ light right in the actual theme of the game, but I was surprised how much I like this little game from Danko Friend of me pastry party. I don't know a ton about this game except I know it's on Kickstarter right now and in fact We talked about it last week in our crowd surfing segment. I'm sure of it <laughs> I love how it looks. I don't know why the word frenemy is there, but the pasta, the pastry party, that part of there. Did I say pastry party? What is wrong with me? Don't answer that. Hey, Sprouts is here. That's not a board game. That's a paper and pencil game. All right, we'll take a look at that in just a second. Let me slide down and see if there's any other ones we want to draw attention to. Um, zombie house blitz. That just sounds weird. Frontline, no comrades. All right, we'll take a look at those three games. <coughs> so Sprouts, I read about Sprouts in a book. Um, and so Sprouts is a game, you draw a few spots in a paper, and you must connect two spots with a curve. It doesn't intersect other curves, it tells you that. And then you draw a new spot on that curve, and every spot can be attached a maximum of three curves. So you're trying to capture the other person in, and it creates a really weird-looking thing. Like you can see this here. It's, I've played Sprouts before on paper. I'd have to go back and make sure I have the rules right or everything, but I find it to be a really fascinating little game. I first read about it in this big yellow book that my parents had as a kid that had a ton of games inside, and it still drives me nuts. Uh, one of my siblings got me this book for my birthday like a decade or so ago, and I was like, oh man, it's great, and then I don't have it again. Ah, but it was a great, it had like, different ways to play cards in it and puzzles in it and logic problems in it. I loved the book. Zombie House Blitz. Nah, I'm not really sold on the artwork. Jeremiah Lee. Oh, I know Jeremiah Lee. All right. Stupid Awesome Games. So Jeremiah Lee has also done, he's eating a piece there, Zombie in My Pocket, which is considerably rated higher than Zombie House Blitz. Frontline No Comrades. Oh, yeah. Sam played this. Sam reviewed this one. I played this one with Sam. This is from Anvil 8. I like the artwork of this one, but if I'm remembering correctly, did not like the game. Um, this would happen often if we played a game and Sam liked it and I didn't. I would have Sam do the review, but I'm remembering not enjoying this, although I do like the artwork of the bears and the characters. All right, we're almost to the end of this particular one. Uno Mod. What is that? It sounds interesting. Zogan. We'll take a look at that one. That has, I'm just picking ones with it. Names look interesting. Advanced Dungeons Dragons Battle System. And then Walter Wick, Can You See What I See? Which I gave an 8. And Mission Combat, to which I gave a 7. All right, here we go. Uno Mod. It's a modern makeover for Uno. Oh, this is from Mattel. Oh, it's just like, it's like classy. Oh, and there's also a mod card, which adds some rules. Nah, okay, whatever. Zogan. Oh, this is a uh, oink game. It's pretty lowly rated for an oink game. You're trying to get her in micro, micro cards from your hand. I like the look of it, though. All right, Advanced Dungeon Dragons Battle System, second edition. It's an updated set of rules. You can use miniatures in a tabletop battle system. Ah, okay. Well, that's cool to look at for purposes of, like, nostalgia, I suppose. Can you see what I see? I like this game a lot. It works really well for kids as you're flipping over cards and looking for objects. And then, of course, this little little dude shows up all the time. I, especially young kids, this game works really, really well. I highly recommend it. Mission Combat 2013. I gave this a 7. Portalus versus Marines. Okay, I'm remembering it a little bit. 
Oh, I remember. I actually remember the people I played it with the first time I played it. Um, it's it's a game where you have these cards that are, it's like um. It's a it's a tactical game as you play these cards out trying to attack the other person. It's like a I believe it is it two player only if I'm if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, 15 minutes and back and forth game. I don't know that I love the art on it, but I like the back and forth nature of it. And this one kind of came and went. But hey, it's ranked 13,100. That's easy to remember. That's Mission Combat. You know what else that is? That's another episode of 10,000 and below. Thank you everybody for watching. I hope to see you next episode. And what are there games that I didn't I should have talked about and didn't mention? Mention them in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. And you've been watching 10,000 and below on the Dice Tower.